greetings, this is m squared, and we're going to graph some absolute value functions, and then after we graph them, we're going to identify the range and domain of those functions. So, I don't know how much you've learned yet when you're graphing, but hopefully you remember, you remember that an absolute value function is, in sh is shaped like a V, and hopefully you've learned, I will just bring this little parent, parent function transformation sheet over here. Hopefully you've learned what makes a function move left, right, up, down, reflect over the y-axis, vertically shrink, vertically stretch, horizontally shrink and stretch. Hopefully you remember all that because it comes in so handy when you're doing any cut type of graphing off of a parent function. So that might be something to print off or to write on a little note card. Handy, handy. It doesn't matter. This is just a quadratic example, a square root example, but it would be the same thing with the absolute value. So, having that in mind, I know that if there's a minus 3 in here, that I've moved the original graph right 3, right 3, and this moves it up 4. So I actually know my little vertex here, instead of being at 0, 0, is right 3 and up 4. And then there was nothing to vertically stretch it or horizontally sh stretch or shrink, nothing like that, nothing flipping it over. So I know then that the absolute value function just goes up one over one on both sides. If you did not know that, what you could do is just start putting numbers to the right and left of your vertex in. Like if I put a 2 in, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. So when I put a, w a 2 in, I was up 5, which is what that says. And you could make a little t-chart and do that. Well, now we need to figure out what our domain and range is. There's only two things that limit domain, and those are square roots with a variable in them and denominators with variables in them. And you'll notice that these absolute values do not have either of those. So our domain will be all real numbers. There are different ways to write that. Some teachers are okay with all real numbers. Some teachers want you to use interval notation. So you would say negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, there's other ways to write it. You're just going to have to figure out what your teacher wants. The range now, remember, the range deals with what y can be. Domain deals with what x can be. For our range, we don't go down forever. We just go up forever. So our range actually begins right here. So we need to find that y value. And we went up 4, and you can count that too, but this right here would tell you where your range would begin. So our range is anything bigger than or equal to 4. So we would say our range is y is greater than or equal to 4. All real numbers that are greater than or equal to 4. Okay, let's look at this one. This negative sign tells me I'm flipped over the x-axis. This 2 tells me I'm vertically stretched. This 1 tells me I'm moved left 1. And this tells me I'm moved down 5. So keeping all that in mind, my vertex is now at negative 1, negative 5. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now normally, on an absolute value function, like, uh, like this one, when it's not vertically stretched or shrunk, I would just go up 1 over 1. Well, I can't now, because now it's a factor of 2 on the um, up and down scale. So remember that this tells you that it's upside down. This tells you it got skinnier, and this shifted it left and right, up and down. So if you're not sure, remember, just put a number in. 0 plus 1 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. Times negative 2 is negative 2. Minus 5 is negative 7. So when I'm at 0, I'm down negative 7. So I want you to notice on the absolute value, traditionally, normally, it would go up 1 over 1. Look what happened. I went down 1 over 1 because of that 2. So this 2 kind of, it's kind of like changing the slope on a line from 1 to 2 where you wouldn't go up 1 over 1, you'd go up 2 over 1. And so you can just keep that same pattern for this absolute value function here, because it's always going to be that 2, 1 ratio for absolute values. So now we need to find our domain. Our domain, again, no square roots no with x's, no radicals with, I mean, denominators with x's. So our domain is all real numbers, and sometimes people use the real number symbol. The range, on the other hand, we don't go up forever, we go down forever. And we started right here, and our y value, since we were down 5, we start at negative 5. So y is anything less than or equal to negative 5. 
Good luck graphing absolute value functions. This is m squared sine of